Welcome to the Up Level Your Future No More Hiding Summit. You will discover innovative talks for personal and business expansion with leading experts. Today, be ready to be infused with hope, strength, and confidence and find powerful direction to lead you on a path of success. Join our world-class speakers and experience inspiration, hope for your future, and an elevation of your desires. Inspired Choices Network, our summit hosts, are excited to have you here. 295 pounds. That's how much I can now deadlift. But for me, there are a lot of parallels between learning how to weightlift late in my life and becoming an exceptional networker. You see, I was one of these people who was a yo-yo gym goer. We've often heard of the yo-yo dieter, right? But I was one of those yo-yo gym goers. I would go to the gym and work out for uh, several months, and then I'd be like, I'm bored. And I would take long breaks. And that requirement, that resistance to go back to the gym again, all I kept thinking was, oh my gosh, it is going to be so painful. And historically, I have found the same to be true with networking. You see, I am a shy introvert. And the idea of walking into a room full of strangers to network, to present myself, to show myself, all made me feel very uncomfortable. And I can still feel it a little bit in my shoulders. But today, my goal is to teach you that networking doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to feel like going to the gym for the first time, but it can feel like a relaxing, enjoyable conversation, maybe over a glass of wine with some good friends. My name is Nancy Michelli, and I didn't actually start out this way. I actually have a background in engineering and started my work in the rubber industry. And as an engineer, people would often come up to me and say, Nancy, you are the most right-brained engineer we've ever met. And HR would be like, you just don't seem to fit the role of a standard engineer. And if you have ever watched the Big Bang Theory, then you know what I'm talking about. Those nerdy people who don't know how to network, who don't know how to socialize, who don't know how to make connections. And what I discovered was my role in the corporate world was not about being the technically expert designer but was taking technical knowledge, technical ideas, and creating a language that everybody in the organization to the construction field could understand. You see, networking is really about your ability to communicate, your ability to share ideas and concepts from people to other people. And so, I have fallen in love with being the translator between engineers and everybody else, or as I like to call us, real people. So today I want to dive into the concept of networking. As I've mentioned, I historically have been a shy introvert. And when I was a kid, my parents owned a floral nursery. And so we grew all kinds of plants and selling was such a big deal for that process. And so I had this whole philosophy in my head that I should go into the corporate world because the idea of selling when I was a kid just made me feel uncomfortable. And so I didn't, I avoided it. And instead of becoming an entrepreneur like my parents, I went in the corporate world. And my theory was, as long as I work hard, as long as I show up and do good work, I don't ever have to sell and promote myself. And then one day in my career, there was a big organizational shift. Our company was bought by another company. And because of that event, 
they decided to switch the leadership team. And the role that I was in, the position that I was in, no longer was mine. And I found myself with a termination slip in hand, thinking, now what am I going to do? It was in that moment that I was like, who can I connect with? Who can I contact and talk about the next strategies in my career? And I reached out to this amazing woman, this amazing engineer who I had worked with before at another company and called her up because she was now the head of business development in a large engineering firm. And I said to her, can we just go for lunch? Can we just go and sit down and help me figure out what my next steps are? What is my next path? And as I met her for lunch, she said, Nancy, I am paying for lunch because we want to hire you. And it was the first time that I really started to understand the power of having a network. And without asking for a job, without looking for a job, I was really just trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. A job was offered to me by someone in my network. And so one of the things that I encourage people to do is think of networking not as this old philosophy of network marketing and selling the things that we sell, but this new philosophy of how can we connect and collaborate with others? Because you see my entire career in the area of engineering was around project management. And it was about helping people connect and collaborate for success. So let's dive into some of the myths or some of the old philosophies that we have around networking and why we should take these and banish them from our language. So networking has this old story of being really salesy. And actually earlier today in our uh, chat, in our networking section, we started talking about this concept of you used to go and hand out business cards and, and connect. And then at the end, people would drop the business cards in the garbage because they knew the point of networking back then was all about how many people can I give my business cards to? But today's world of networking isn't about how many people you can give business cards to. It actually turns people off to do that. Today's networking isn't just about sales. It is about creating connection with other people who can help you do different things. So maybe you collaborate on finding an investor for your company. Maybe that person is an expert in the field and they become someone who's your mentor. Maybe that person becomes someone in your group of friends who you can just rely on. So I want you to take this concept that networking is about sales and think about networking now as who is it that I can collaborate with to be more successful in my life, my career, and deliver the purpose, the mission that you were put on this earth to do. The second myth that I want you to think about is this concept that only extroverts network. And I'm gonna tell you as someone introverted, part of the reason I struggled getting in networking events is I felt like it was back to being in high school and going to those high school dances. And I was the nerdy girl who stood along the back wall, just hoping somebody would invite me to dance. And then in the room, right, were all of these people who were having fun, who connected, who just moved about. And I was just like, somebody just please, please invite me to dance. 
And so networking can sometimes feel like you're in a room full of extroverts who all know and can balance with each other. But here's the secret of being an introvert in a networking perspective. You have this superpower to listen, to just connect and allow the other person the opportunity to be heard, seen, and valued. And when you do that, you create better relationships. And so as someone who has this historical philosophy of being shy, I'm no longer shy. I now go in and think about how can I connect from and use the power, the superpower that I have from being introverted. And I'll describe that a little bit more when I go through my process. And the next thing is that I want us to reconsider networking is we often consider networking as being at an event. So it could be online like this one and being at a summit or going to a conference and an organization. But networking happens everywhere. And what you probably aren't even thinking about is that you network more than you realize. That could be at your church group and going and being part of that church organization and connecting with people in that space. It could be at your kid's baseball game and connecting with the parents in that space. It could be even the people that you work with at this moment. And I want you to think about networking as this ability to build around you these incredible people who allow you to live your purpose, to allow you to show up as your most natural self and you want to support you and you want to support them. So networking is not this concept of going to an event and just being at the event and having these sales conversations. Networking happens anywhere and everywhere that there are more than one person. So those are the three myths that I like to bust in around networking. And I want you to think now and reflect for a moment, where do you network? Is it at church? Is it at uh, with a group from university? Is it through work or through sports? Or where do you network? Now, let's talk about my process of going into a networking event for the first time. That first time can often feel very overwhelming for people to walk in. And I was having a chat with a coach who's actually quite good at connecting. But he was telling me the other day in our conversation how uncomfortable it is for him to go into an event. So he goes in, finds a chair, sits down, and hopes that people will come to him. Now, because he's very charismatic, very jovial, people actually are attracted to him. And so he is successful by that perspective. But for those of us who are not necessarily as jovial, as fun, as like outgoing, it can feel a little uncomfortable. So when you go to the event, the first thing that I want people to think about and that I think about is my goal is not necessarily for someone to know me or to connect to as many people in the room as possible. But my goal is how can I elevate someone else's experience? Because I am probably not the only person in the room uncomfortable to be at the event. And so when I enter the room, I go look for the person who's standing alone, who's that kid from high school still standing against the wall, and go introduce myself and just simply reach out my hand and say, hi, I'm Nancy. What is your name? And I allow that to happen just naturally. 
And you can do this with somebody standing by the wall. You can do this by getting in line for food. You can do this by having your kid play with somebody else's kids and go introduce the parent or whoever is there chaperoning them at the baseball game and introduce yourself. And all of it starts with saying, hey, my name is. The next part of networking, and that helps take the pressure off you for being there, is starting to ask great questions. And I love conversation starters, icebreakers that help the conversation flow. And by having good icebreakers, by having these good ways to start the conversation, it takes the pressure off of you as to what is it that I need to think about? What is it that I need to say in this moment or come up with these clever marketing strategies and these um, elevator pitches? What I'm going to encourage you to do, get rid of the elevator pitch and take a moment and just be like, I want to get to know them and ask a really good opening question. So it could be, tell me what brought you here today. Or if you're, say, watching uh, the kids play soccer, which one's your kid? Tell me about why they love to be here. And it starts the conversation going. And then you can start to use language like, tell me more. Tell me what else is interesting and just allow the conversation to flow. The problem often with the reason we resist networking is we get into this thing that I have to answer all of these questions and we start to drill people or feel like we are drilled. But ask nice casual conversations to get to know that person, to get to know why they are there, to get to know why they are inspired, to get to know what helped them get to the position they are at. So prepare yourself. What are some questions that you would love to know about that person? So I believe that networking is all about collaboration. And my other philosophy is I don't sell on that first perspective. Too often, we get this concept of going up and being like, oh, I need to sell. I need to promote myself. And so we get into this conversation of like, hey, my name's Nancy. Um, are you ready to marry me? And the person feels off-putted. Have you ever experienced that? Where somebody's like, hey, here's my offer. And you don't know what it is. And so I want to invite you to realize that in these first networking conversations, you're really just trying to get to know the person. You're really trying to think about what is it that they do. And this is true both in-person networking or if you're networking online. So think about that. If you've ever been on LinkedIn, do you accept a connection for someone? And the next thing you know, you get this spammy email saying, hey, here's my offer and here's how I can solve your problem. For me, this is the same process. I want you to think about how do I connect? How do I get to know that other person as a person and find out more about what they need, what they can inspire, or maybe how they can help you? As we move forward through this process, I want you to think about what is the next step in the networking activity. So now that you've gone, you've met this person, you're like, hey, I want to get to know this person a little bit more. This is where the trained sommelier in me loves to invite people to go have a drink. And this drink could be a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, or it could be um, let's go have a cocktail after the event. But the intention is to be able to have that short conversation find something to connect on and then be like, hey, let's go have, let's go meet for a coffee or a drink and just sit down and have a nice chat. 
And it's in that chat, that second chat, or potentially that third chat, where you start to build the relationships to find out how you can serve each other better. And I want to state that really specifically, how you can serve each other better. It's never just a one-sided activity. It's never just, how can I sell to this person? How can I promote myself to this person to get a job? It is, how can we serve each other better? And it happens because you go deeper in the conversation with the other person. You move deeper. You start to understand what it is that they need. And when you do, you can then be like, hey, oh, I can do that. So for example, one of the speakers earlier today, she was, we were having a networking chat and she was like, you know, somebody said, hey, can you help with PR? And she's like, hmm, you know what? I can help with PR. And so when people ask and connect with you, then you can figure out what it is that I can offer and how can I collaborate and support them? So I want you to really step back and reflect that networking isn't this concept of going in and selling and promoting yourself and that you have to put on this, this coat of armor that says, okay, I am here to network. I really want you to walk away thinking that networking is about building a relationship that allows both of you to grow and to serve your purpose. And I wanna share just a little story to end this with. So a few years ago, I had joined the Chamber of Commerce and I had gone into LinkedIn one day and I had noticed that one of our business organizations in town had just hired a new CEO. And he was brand new to town. And I had looked at his profile and I had seen that he was a he had a background in growing grapes. He had a background in doing other work and in the wine industry. And because I'm a trained sommelier, I just love wine and talking about wine. And so we we're on a boat and he comes down the steps and I see him. And I go up and I introduce myself to him and say, hello, Dan. And Dan is like, he's Mr. Charismatic, which I am not. But I said to him, I said, welcome to our city. Because he knew nobody on the boat. And before I knew it, we were having an amazing conversation about wine. But a few weeks later, he phones me up and he says, Nancy, do you do corporate training and team building? And I said, I happen to. And he's like, perfect. I need some help with the board of directors. And we're kicking off our first meeting post-COVID. Would you come and work with me to facilitate it? Dan and I never had any conversation about what it is. And I never had asked. But it was through our mutual understanding and a love of wine that we were able to start the conversation and it led to a long working future together. So I want you to reflect and think that networking is a great way for you to connect with others, to build relationships and make long-term collaborations. My name is Nancy Michelli and I would love to network with you. And I invite you to follow me on LinkedIn and nancymichellecoaching.com. Cheers. Thank you for joining this motivating talk on the Up Level Your Future No More Hiding Summit. Inspired Choices Network and our expert speakers are excited to connect with you and learn about your hopes and desires to lead you to greater success. If you would like to learn more about everything Inspired Choices Network offers, including future summits, please email us at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. 